Alright, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about the classification of the matter in terms of the state. So we, in, an, in a previous tutorial we talked, we classified the matter in terms of uh, the composition. Here we're going to focus on in terms of states. And uh, some of you are, already, are probably already familiar with these uh, different states. Uh, the first one is actually a solid. So in a solid state you have a very a definite shape and volume, or another way of saying uh, a well-defined shape and volume constitute the solid state. And uh, you know, if I talk about some examples, I can have a pen or a book or even the ice. They are all an example of solid state because they have a very well-defined shape and the volume. Now, what really makes um, a well-defined shape and the volume is how the particles that makes up the solid are arranged. So in the solid, the particles, they are actually very close to one another. And uh, since they are very close to one another and they also have a very fixed position and they don't really like to move around much. Okay, so as a result, it gives in a very well-defined shape and a very well-defined volume because of the restricted motion of those particles. So in, in solid state I can say the particles are very close to one another and they have a very fixed position. Okay, And uh, when we talk about how in, in terms of if solids are compressible or incompressible, the solids comes into the category of an incompressible. Now what that really means if I have a pencil and if I try to kind of press it, it doesn't really change the size of the pencil or it doesn't really change the volume of the pencil. That's because those particles are so close to one another that they cannot go any further close to one another and as a result they are incompressible. Okay, now on the other hand when we look at the liquids so liquids has a, a well-defined volume, but they don't really have a well-defined shape. So another way of saying they have a definite volume, but indefinite shape. Now if I take an example of water as my liquid, if you have a water in the bottle, and suppose it's about half a liter of bottle, if I spill that water onto the floor, the amount of water is still going to be half a liter. It's not going to magically disappear unless you know some of that evaporates over the course of time. However, the shape will be changed. The shape of the water in the water bottle was actually in the form of a bottle, but as soon as it was spilled onto the floor, it takes the shape of the floor. Or if I spill or if I put that water into a bowl, it will take the shape of the bowl. So that's why they have an indefinite shape. Now, what really makes the liquids having indefinite shape but a definite volume is how the particles are arranged. So the particles, they are still fairly close to one another, but the problem with them is they are a little bit free to move around. So another way of saying they are not very fixed particles. So when they can move around here and there, they can take the shape of anything you are putting them into. So particles are still close in when it become, comes down to the liquids, and they are, however, not fixed. So since they are not fixed, you get a different shape for those liquids. And liquids are nearly incompressible. So an ideal liquid will not compress. So let me take an example of uh, uh, water. If I put water in a, a glass, I cannot squeeze that water to make it a smaller volume because they are already close enough to one another. However, like I said, you can change the shape by putting them into a different container. That's just because the particles are do not have a fixed position they can move around with respect to one another. Okay, so those are your liquids. Obviously, you know, you want to make sure you know the, uh, the definitions, like they have a well-defined volume, but they do not have a well-defined shape. Okay, let's talk about uh, gases. 
Now, gases don't really have anything. They do not have a shape and they do not have the volume. And uh, the reason why the gases don't have something like that is because the particles in gases, they are uh, far away from one another. Okay, and since they are far away from one another, first they are free to move around so they can take the shape of anything and they can also come closer to one another if you apply pressure onto them. And if they do come close to one another, you're altering the volume. Or you can, if you release the pressure, they can move away from one another and that will increase the volume of those gases. If I take an example of, uh, let's say, in a, a propane cylinder, um, if I open up the propane cylinder inside the bathroom, the propane gas will expand and take the shape of the bathroom. So now the volume of that propane that has been released into the bathroom is going to be the same as the volume of the bathroom. But then at the same time, if, you, uh, if I open up that propane cylinder into in a big room, it takes the shape and the volume of that big room. And the reason is again the same, that uh, the particles, they are not close to one another and they do not have a fixed uh, positions they can move around. So I can say the particles are far from one another and they are not fixed. And as a result, if you can change the, uh, the volume of something, that means that uh, you can compress those uh, materials. So the gases are highly compressible. So you can either uh, put a pressure on the gases to decrease the volume. And if you release the pressure, they will increase the volume and vice versa. Okay, so those are the main three states of matters that you guys are going to be learning in a, in a physics or a chemistry course. Uh, the solids have a well-defined shape and volume. Liquids have well-defined volume but no shape, and gases do not have the shape and the volume. Sometimes, in addition to those three states, you may briefly talk about the fourth state, which is called the plasma. Now, plasma is actually going to be very similar to the gases, so they do not have the shape and the volume. However, the one difference between the gases and the plasma is ga plasma is actually a conductive. All right, so conductive means they can, they can conduct electricity. Or another way of saying they are nothing but the ionized gases. Okay, so I can talk about ice. So ice is a solid, and then I can talk about once ice melt and makes the liquid, so that's in a liquid form now. And then once it vaporizes and makes the vapors, you are in the gas form. And anytime you have lightning going on, that's also uh, taking, also kind of using the moisture in the air. So that's the ionized gases. So that's going to be your plasma in that particular case. Okay, so the thing you need to know about the plasma is it's similar to the gases, but it's in a conductive. And as a result, you can call that it's an ionized gas form. Okay, all right, so that's all we have about the three states of matters. In a, uh, another tutorial, I'll talk about the physical changes and the chemical changes. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.